Lord, to about, praise the Lord, about two passages of scripture. Want to read, praise the Lord, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and verse three and four. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, verses three and four. And then, praise the Lord, I would like to go to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Amen. <clears throat> and we want to read verses 1 through 9. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy, thank God, 6th chapter, verses 3. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord through 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Somebody read it for me tonight. Hear therefore, Israel, mm -hmm. and observe to do it. Hear therefore, Israel, O Israel, observe and observe to do it. That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with thee. And that ye may increase mightily. That you may increase mightily. As the Lord God of the fathers hath promised thee. Uh huh. In the land that flows with milk and honey. Verse four. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God. The Lord our God is one Lord. Is one Lord. Matthew, the thirteenth chapter, verses one through nine. Shall we read? The same day. Mm -hmm. The same day went Jesus out of the house. Yes. And sat by the seaside. Sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he went into a ship and sat. He went into a ship and he sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables. Come on. Saying, well, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Yes. And when he sowed, yes. some seeds fell by the wayside. Some fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them. Yes. Some fell upon stony places. Stony places. Where they had not much earth. Didn't have much earth. And forthwith they sprung up. Uh huh. Because they had no deepness of earth. Come on. And when the sun was up, yes. there was scorched. It was scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Withered away. And some fell among thorns. Some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprung up and choked them. And choked them. But other fell into good ground. Come on. And brought forth fruit. Yeah. Some in hundredfold. Some a hundred. Some sixtyfold. Some sixty. Some thirtyfold. Come on. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Our subject tonight, praise the Lord, the ability to hear. The ability to hear. Father, may we do no damage to your word, but speak that which is sound, which is right, which is true. Open up our understanding that we may have a right revelation, right division of your word. Hallelujah, that we may grow thereby. And yield fruit, as the lesson says, some 60, some 30, some 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you could keep one sense that didn't go bad, which one would it be? Okay, you're in. Maybe be honest. I mean, y'all ain't got to say it just because we read it in the scripture here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, be honest. Yeah. Yeah. You want to have your eyes? Yeah. Here? Eyes? Your ears. I can't see you. Eyes? So most people want to be able to see. <laughs> All right? Let me give you a combination. Let's say you can only have two senses. Which one would you rather have? Seeing and hearing. So yeah. now you've been able to walk. See and touch. Oh, the senses. I thought you said five well, senses. Well, that's, that's a sense. Being able to walk. Hey, Amen. An ability. Maybe I should say ability. Oh, okay. Oh, my. Seeing and walk. See and walk. You want to taste? <laughs> so you want to see and taste? See and walk. See and walk. See and taste. See and walk. See and walk. See and touch. See and touch. 
So you won't be able to see and touch, but walking is you know, yeah, I mean, you got to be able to touch the walk. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they all work together. It's hard to describe. You separate them. Now, you won't be able to see and hear. Amen. You know, praise the Lord. These, it's, 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 it's a strange question to ask. You know, if the Lord just come before you and say, listen, my child. For your own betterment, I'm going to leave you with two abilities. Which would you rather have? Praise the Lord. Either you tell him that's what you got to have till you meet him in glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Depending on what you value the most, that's really what you want the most. Come on, somebody. Yeah, amen. Now, I didn't ask you that to shame you if you didn't say here, praise the Lord. Because yeah. I'm quite sure I probably want my sight. Yeah. And I was begging, Lord, can't be about three, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Can't at least be three, Lord. Yeah. I want to be able to see you and walk. So, I feel like you can see, you can get what, you can get, you can see somebody write down stuff that you couldn't hear. Yeah. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, praise the Lord. Now, mind you, they had been in Egypt for how long? 430 years. Amen. They had operated as slaves. When they went in, they were a family. You know, about, the Bible said about 80, 84 souls went in. By the time they had been there over those 400 years, praise the Lord, they had come out, praise the Lord, or they had turned into a mighty nation of people, more than 600,000 people. Praise the Lord. Uh, and if you just count the meeting, and you know it's going to be well over a million when you count the women and the children. Those are just roundabout figures. You know, they're not exact because even when we do census today, they tell you about how many, how much the population has grown every 10 years. But they get, if, if they had to swear by their life, they wouldn't just swear by their life and say, you know, that's how many people, how many billion people. Because they don't really know. You don't have the ability to put your hands on all those people. Hallelujah. So when you look at the counting, while we understand that the word of God is inspired and God cannot lie, that's not the issue here. The issue is he's kind of giving you an understanding of what you're dealing with with people. And praise the Lord. So now God brings them out of Egypt, out of bondage and slavery. And now, praise the Lord, he has to turn them into a functioning nation a thriving nation, a nation, praise our God, that a man uh, will represent him. And when he comes down, when Moses comes down, a man from Mount Sinai, the very first thing he tells them to do is what? Hear. Praise the Lord. Hear. Praise the Lord. Now, when we look at hearing, praise the Lord, we're not just dealing with the ability to hear sound. Hallelujah. You can hear sound and still not hear. Lord have mercy. To hear in this sense is more than physically hearing a sound, but it is to perceive that what is being said is valuable and the desire to understand at the fullest degree what is being uttered. Let me say that again. Hallelujah. To hear in this sense is more than physical hearing a sound, but it is to perceive that what is being said is valuable and the desire to understand at the fullest degree what is being uttered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So being able to perceive that what is being said is something of importance means that I am hearing, I'm hearkening. When I hearken, I'm listening with the intent to do what I hear. I'm listening with the intent to do what I hear. And when I value something, amen, as important, I want to lean in and hear it. Have you ever been trying to tell somebody something and they interrupt you? 
Why did they interrupt? Because they figured that the point that they have to make is more valuable than hearing the word that come out your mouth. Sometimes when your child is trying to defend themselves and they know they're sure about to get a beat. The most important thing for them at that moment is not hearing what you have to say. It is trying to save their own skin by trying to interject. So what you're saying to them at that moment is not valuable because they're not hearing it. Does not mean that they don't hear sound, but they're not focusing on what you're saying because they don't deem it as something valuable at the time. How many of you all understand, praise the Lord, that to be able to hear God, amen, is the most valuable thing that you can ever have? Because it is God that gives us direction for our life. It is God, amen, who is in his hand, who has blessings, curses, life, death, peace, joy, and happiness. All emanates from God. Hallelujah. And the ability to hear him. So, amen, when somebody refuses to hear God, that means that they don't value what God is saying is true. This is why sinners are going to hell. This is why the world, praise the Lord, amen, don't know God because they don't hear him. They don't listen to him. So they don't deem what he has to say as a book. You can throw scripture on a worldly person all day long. It doesn't have the same weight on it that it does, amen, on somebody that's a believer. Because a believer puts value on the word of God. A believer has made a covenant to live their life by what is written in the book. So when you deal with somebody that don't value what the book say, then you have a right to question not only their relationship with God, but the validity of their salvation. Because if you don't respect the word of God, you don't respect God. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? Praise God. So in order, praise the Lord, uh, to respect God, we must respect the hearing of his word. Listen to this. To be able to hear God, is a sign that you belong to him. For the Bible says in St. John the 10th chapter, my sheep do what? Hear my voice. As a stranger, they will not follow. So the ability to hear God's voice in precision and in clarity, amen, is a sure telltale sign that I am in the fold of God. Hallelujah. Because I'm able to hear his voice. And hearing his voice is not just hearing a noise, but hearing his voice is being able to distinguish between my master's voice and somebody else's voice. Amen. In Israel, amen, shepherds let their sheep run together and graze all day long. And there is no particular marking on the sheep. There is no difference between the sheep. They all look like one herd of sheep, praise God. And some people are afraid, amen, you know, I would be afraid to say, well, why am I going to let mine run? Let me count all my sheep because, amen, I ain't going to let you take none of my sheep when it's time for me to go home. But the truth of the matter, a sheep has an innate ability that when the shepherd gives a certain call, each sheep go back with their designated shepherd. Amen. Amen. I saw it. I couldn't. I couldn't really understand. I couldn't understand the, the, the tip chapter of Saint John. Two. One day on Facebook, I understood it, what it was saying. But to just say I knew what it was saying, I, I, I saw on Facebook in Israel sheep, praise the Lord, and I saw them grazing. And the guy says, "Now watch this." The shepherd had a distinct call, gave that call, and every last one of his sheep followed him. And the next shepherd did the same thing. No sheep mixed in with the other sheep because they knew their shepherd's voice. So the very fact that you hear the voice of God is a sign that you are his child. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you get born again, God puts inside of you an inward ear, a knower, to know when it is God that is speaking versus something else. And people that don't have this ability, it's a sign that they don't know God. You always continue making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. There are two things going on. Either you are somebody whose relationship with God is not close, 
Hallelujah. Or you just simply don't know God. Amen. Because God speaks to his sheep. The problem is not God's ability to speak. It is my ability to hear him when he speaks. Lord, I praise you. So he tells them in Deuteronomy, he says, I want you to hear, O Israel. And then after you hear, observe and do. But see, you can't do it unless you heard it. You ever told a child and gave them direction to go do something and they come back? I just, I don't know how you, and, and, and you gave them the direction that if they followed your direction, the outcome would be a certain way. Right. So, and, and the, so the desired outcome did not come. Praise God. There's two things wrong. You either gave them the wrong directions or they didn't really listen at what you said. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Many times with humans, it, there is a there is an, a, a possibility or percentage of error that maybe I told you to look left or you should have looked right because I'm human. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But even if you went into the vicinity of what I said, you ought to see what I told you. Amen. Now with God, there is zero possibility for error because God never makes a mistake. Amen. So if you presume to do the will of God and don't get the outcome that God said you were going to get, it's praise the Lord. You just need to just go ahead and admit the fact that you didn't do. You, you really didn't hear God the way you were supposed to. Or you heard him and just disobeyed. Amen. Amen. Hearing is an important part, amen, of being able to profit and benefit in serving God. Let me tell you something. All of us being believers, but we are all not on the same level. And we all don't get the same benefits, praise the Lord, if we don't listen to something. I know that I know that's because we want to think that God just give us all the same thing. He's no respect of persons. God is no respect of persons. But he is respect of obedience. And he is a respect of sacrifice. And to somebody that obeys him, praise the Lord, and, and draws me. The Bible says if you draw nigh to God, what's going to happen? If you draw nigh to God, he's going to get closer to you. Now, the closer that you are, don't you think the better you're going to hear his voice? That's right. The further I am away from you, the more chance there is for me to misconstrue what you said. You didn't say it wrong, but I'm so distant from you when you speak. I really can't. I can hear. Maybe I can read your lips just a little bit so I can make out a little bit of what you're saying. Praise the Lord. But because I'm so distant from you, I really didn't hear yeah. what you said. Come on, somebody. Amen. But the closer that I get to you, amen, the closer that I get to you, I'm able, praise the Lord, to hear with clarity what you are saying so that I can make a right decision for my life. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? It is our proximity to God, amen, that makes us available, amen, and become better hearers of what he's saying. Amen. Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. Yes. Resist the devil, and he will flee. You, you know, we only quote that part. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil, and, he, and you resist it, and he ain't fleeing. He's beating you all in the head. Amen. Have you drawn nigh to God? Yes. Hallelujah. Your closeness to God is what gives you authority over Satan. Amen. Mm. Let me say that again. Your closeness to God is what gives you authority over Satan and over the enemy. If you are what I consider a carnal Christian or casual, you know, praise God, you, 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 you say, you see the Holy Ghost, you went down in Jesus' name, but there's nothing extra about you. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're not a you're not a, a, a avid Bible study person. Yeah, your prayer life is not what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, when you when a demon acts up in your life, praise the Lord. You go, Satan, come out in the name, and he laughs at you. <laughs> Are you not saved? No, that means you ain't saved. Praise the Lord. Not a Christian don't mean you ain't a Christian. Well, I thought there's power in the name. Yeah, there is power in the name of Jesus. But you ain't close enough to him to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. You ain't close. You, 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 you playing games. And because you're playing games, you don't have the right to invoke and use the name of a master that you're not willing to obey and follow. Amen. So he says, draw nigh to me, 
and then I'll draw nigh to you. Come close to me. The closer you come, see, you have to make the first step. The closer you come to me, then I'll come closer to you. And now, praise the Lord, you have the backing of heaven to use my name. I'm sorry, praise the Lord, you might be my blood, but if you and I are not close as blood folks, I'm not going to let you sign my name to no check or nothing like that. My relationship with you determines how much access I give you into my life. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, amen, the ability to hear God will either bring us closer or the lack thereof can put us firm. Let me also tell you something else. It is a gift to be able to hear God. Amen. Amen. Go to Matthew, the 13th chapter, about verse 15. Matthew 13 and verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross. Amen. This people's heart has waxed gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. They're dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Uh-huh. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes. Uh-huh. And hear with their ears. Yeah. And should understand with their heart. Come on. And should be converted. And should be converted. And I should heal them. And I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes. Why? So they see. They see. And your ears for they hear. And they hear. Praise the Lord. And then in another verse he says, I have given them the spirit of slumber. So that they, in seeing they shall see not, in hearing that they shall hear not, and perceive but, but not perceive. Praise the Lord. In other words, the ability to hear God is a gift from God to open your ears and to hear Him. Everybody don't hear. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. Everybody don't hear. Amen. And so the ability to hear from God is a gift from God. And you got to look at it as such. The Bible says that God said I will do nothing except I reveal it to my prophets first. Hallelujah. Well, then that would make me want to be one of them prophets. Because I, I, I want the inside information, amen, praise God, about what's going on. Amen. Lord, you getting ready to bring an earthquake? Tell me. Amen. I'm going to call everybody I know. Look, look, there's going to be an earthquake. You know, let's get on out. Run for your life. Amen. About to be a tsunami on the coast. Come on, somebody. Amen. I guarantee every time God get ready to do something, somebody know about it. Amen. Amen. Maybe they can't tell you exactly every little detail, but they can tell something about that. Man, get ready. Position yourself. Get yourself together. And depending on your ability to hear will be your ability to respond. You only respond as good as you hear or as good as you value the information that you've been told. Oh, you're quiet. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. Any questions? All right. Listen. Hallelujah. The level that you hear on is determined by your calling and your relationship. Depending on what office you operate in, if you are a pastor or a leader, your hearing, praise the Lord, is a little bit sharper than those who are not. Because you give direction to people, so you have to be able to hear. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And you mean to tell me you following somebody that don't hear no better than you? But it's Lord. How do they warn you? How do they cover you in prayer if they can't see them? If they can't hear the voice of God? Mm -hmm. Y'all quiet? Praise Amen. the Lord. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. The ear is the gateway for the seed of God's word to be planted in one's heart. When Jesus begins to give the parable of the seed, praise the Lord, and he talks about some sown on good ground, some sown by the wayside. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some, amen. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm going to have to this. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Some sown by the wayside. Praise the Lord. Some, amen, on stony ground. Praise the Lord. And then the disciples ask him at the end, he says, they say, well, what is the meaning of this parable? And he said, the sower that sows, amen, is he sowing the what? The word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now he says, when anyone 
hears the word of God. So my hearing is a gateway for the word of God to be sown. And unless I have good hearing, my hearing is going to determine what kind of ground I have. Amen. Praise the Lord. I do. My hearing, my hearing, my hearing, my hearing, my hearing, my ability to hear and to perceive. What do you know that there are some people that don't have no perception whatsoever? Y'all quiet. Amen. I said they don't have perception whatsoever. They can't perceive it. One lady told me one day I used to do backyard Bible club for the uh, Raleigh Baptist Association, and she was a Jewish woman who had converted to Christianity, had been to Israel and everything. And we were talking, and I was young. I was about 14, 15. And she says, you are very perceptive. You have a great perception. And so that was one of those words that I had to go look up in a dictionary because I had never heard anyone tell me I was perceptive. What is that? Did she curse me? What was that? <laughs> perception, friend. And I looked at it. And, and, and it was the ability to see, praise God. Not only to see, but to understand, to perceive something. And then people, there are people, they have no perception. They can't look at somebody and tell when that person ain't receiving what you say. So they keep talking. Come on, somebody. They, they, can't, they, they have no perception or ability to tell when someone is against them. There used to be a song that said, don't take everybody to be your friend. Amen. And some of us, we have zero perception level. We just, we, 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 we just welcome everything into my circle with open arms. You have no perception. You tell, you, you have loose lips. Amen. Amen. Loose lips sink ships. Amen. You don't have any perception. But see, that's a sign that maybe your relationship with God needs to be tightened up. Amen. Because when you have a relationship with God, do you not know that God will deal with you about people? Yeah. God will deal with you about situations. Amen. I've had God to give me a dream about something that I was going to deal with when I went to work the next morning. Wow. Hallelujah. He dealt with me and got me ready so that when I walked in, praise God, I was already prepared to receive what was getting ready to happen. Because when you walk close with God, God will talk to you. Oh, y'all quiet. Amen. All you folks that got to have people to tell you what the word of the Lord is, thus saith the Lord. Amen. You must go have a relationship with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. You must go have a prayer life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I'm leery of people that always want to tell me what the Lord say. Because my question is, if God told you all that about me, what did he say about you? Why your life so jacked up? I need, to, I need to tell you what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Evidently, praise God, you're not hearing too good. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Your ability to hear shows in the fruit of your life. Amen. Huh? Amen. If you divorce, don't give me no praise the Lord, nothing on no marriage. You ain't qualified. Amen. Y'all quiet. Amen. Your children run them up. Don't tell me about it. Leave my children alone. Amen. Right? That's what the other angel said. Right. Yeah, you working on my children. My children doing better than yours. Amen. At least they heels in church, praise God. Amen. Leave mine alone. Amen. He said, you talk about my rose, how my rose, and then I go look at your rose, and they all dirty and out of order, praise the Lord. He said, go clean your rose first. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. It, it, it just, and, and, and it's so, you know, strange that we see people today that they are just so in love with the prophetic that they just want to say, this is what the, the, the Lord told me that, why did he tell you? Mm -hmm. Praise God, why did, he, why did he speak to you and tell you what you needed to do? And all of a sudden, you're trying to tell me what I need to do. Amen. Amen. You can't hear God for yourself. Amen. I'm leery of those kind of people. I'm leery, I'm leery, y'all, my God. Not, but I'm leery. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. You won't be fooled by people if you stay close to God. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Even if they if they do something bad to you, they did they, they might have thought that they pulled the wool up, but you saw it. Amen. You might have allowed yourself to be taken in, but you already knew from the because let me tell you something. God always gives warnings and signs to those that walk with him. Amen. So you can't really be mad. Well, Lord, why didn't you tell me yes you did? Oh, yeah. Man, sure did. Yeah, did. That was a lady 
Praise God online. She was giving the church down the country, talking about the prophets and the apostles, putting up all these, you know, homosexuals and sisters, praise the Lord. I mean, she was just going on. Yeah. But see, when, when, when I began to hear her, her voice, I began to hear something else behind that. And I knew it wasn't the Spirit of God in what she was saying, praise the Lord. And, and she was speaking from a heart of offense because she married somebody that happened to be a dairy queen. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And, as, and, and my wife had it recorded on, and, and I told my wife, I said, I guarantee you, I said, I guarantee you, Praise the Lord. Somebody warned her about this person, but she decided that she won't do what she won't do. Praise the Lord. And, and if you give a person enough rope to talk, they just keep on talking, they're going to hate themselves. And just an, an apostle stood me up and told me not to marry this person. And then my mother, she told me not to do it. And then, then, then uh, uh, my mentor, she told me, I said, oh, so now what you want to do, you, you mad because you didn't hear, you didn't make a decision, so you want to shut down all of the apostles and the prophets of the church because you were disobedient in hearing. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something in the church. In the church, there's going to always be some right folk and some wrong folk. It's never, the Bible says, praise the Lord, let the wheat and the tear grow together. He said, and in the day of harvest, God said, I'll do the separating. Amen. We get in trouble when we try to separate people by our own methods and our own means. If God said, leave them alone to harvest time, guess what you're supposed to do? Leave them alone to harvest time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, it wasn't even your own fault. The Bible says, while we slept, the enemy came in and sowed some tares among us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes the enemy will sow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He have access to come. Yeah. He'll sow things. And, and you immediately want to try to handle it. But if you hear God, God said, leave it alone. Amen. Wait. To the day of harvest. You don't know how. Hallelujah. And, and the day of harvest, by the way, saints, is not just judgment. The day of harvest is whenever God decides to deal with something that needs to be dealt with. When God does it, it'll be done right. Amen. But if you do it, amen, in your own flesh, in your own reasoning, you're going to make a mess. Yeah. Amen. God is the only one that has the ability to take the word of God and cut between soul and spirit. Amen. I don't know. I don't know where the soul is and the spirit begins. I don't know. Amen. I must give it. I, I, and I walked with God for a long time, but he didn't show me how to do that yet. Yeah. Maybe y'all, you know, y'all better. Y'all know how to do it. Just, just snatch something, pluck it up, and expect it to come. You don't know. Amen. Even doctors that do surgery on people's body, amen, they're very careful. And if they're the percentage that they, if, if the percentage that they're gonna get it wrong is greater than the percentage that they're gonna get it right, they won't even operate. Amen. They'll say it's inoperable. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, well, why is it? You got all this knowledge, you got these. Cameras and stuff like that, because I know that I don't have the skill to go in and do it. Amen. There are some things that when you hear God, you got to realize that there are some things bigger than you. And you, and no matter how impatient I am to want God to do something, I got to be able to wait on God to do it. Amen. If God don't do it when I want to do it, I got to have enough confidence to know that God got it handled. God got it under control. Amen. God is always in control, saints of God. Amen. I said, God is always, i never forget, I worked at Krispy Kreme, praise the Lord, and there was a season. There was a season, praise the Lord, where uh, they were firing all kinds of people, praise God, because uh, corporate had come in and found out that so much money had been embezzled and, and stole right up under the nose of the general manager and the uh, uh, praise the Lord and the district manager and so and man, they were just cleaning the house from the bookkeepers on down they were giving everybody a pass and they brought in a guy named Ferguson hallelujah and I never forget him praise the Lord never forget him praise God long as he lived praise God because he was mean <laughs> when I say mean he was mean have you ever met folk that would just do something to you just because they could do it? Because they got the power. That's the kind of guy he was. Wow. And he told me out of his mouth one night, if you don't do such and such, I'm going to put you back there on that line, and you're going to have to box all those donuts by yourself, and you better not drop nail one of them. Wow. I mean, he was just 
And so one night, I just got to the point where I was tired of him. I looked at him, I told him, listen, man, listen, bro, I put on my pants just like you put on yours. You ain't going to talk to me in any kind of way. I mean, I just, boom, got to be riding on the road, praise the Lord, with my pants and told him, I said, you know, you know what I told him? I said, I put my pants on just like I, and I'm talking right big like I had, you know, I had it lit. And this guy was me, and he was the devil. Hallelujah. But my pastor brought correction to me in a way that, I, that helped me to understand order. Yeah, yeah. That God is a God of order. Mm -hmm. He said, that man is your boss. Mm -hmm. He said, and for you to talk to him that way was different. I don't care how he, he is your boss. Mm -hmm. And you need to respect him. And I'm mean, like, you put that my food. I just you know. <laughs> he broke me down like a shot. Mm -hmm. Had to go back and apologize to him. But just, you know, bring it out that way. But let me tell you something. When I got back and I submitted myself and obeyed, him and I actually got a little closer. But let me tell you what happened. They come in and they gave him the axe too. By, and by the time they gave him the axe on Barbara, I, me and him had grown so far I didn't even want him to do <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it just worked out the way it did. Sometimes, thanks of God, you got to hear God. And the voice of God came through my pastor as long as you resist. Sometimes God brings some things to teach you how to pray and to wait on him. Some things come, amen, to bring you closer to God. And if God moves everything out of the way, when you think it all is, you won't know how to wait on God. Yeah, you won't know how to travail on God. You won't know how to sit still till you hear the voice of God. Amen. Amen. God is very eloquent. Amen. God knows how to speak and what to say when he says. Yes. Yes. Sometimes he got to get you in the shape to hear him talk. Amen. Sometimes you ain't prepared to hear it. Huh? Amen. Amen. Could that be something we even look at what the Bible says? They got mad with Moses talking about we want to hear God for ourselves. Y'all remember that? Oh, we yeah. want to hear the Lord. We want to hear God for ourselves. Yeah. And he said, like, he looked up and said, You don't you don't want to hear God. He, you, you ain't ready. He said, We want they said, we want to hear God for ourselves, Core and all of them. He said, I tell you what, take three days and wash. First of all, you got too many nasty habits around. You ain't clean enough to talk to God. So go wash. Wash for three days. Tell the men, don't even come against your wives. No hanky panky for three days, praise the Lord. And then when he, and then when he come, we got to set borders around the mountain because he's coming down on the mountain. And you can't even touch that mountain because if you try to touch that, if an animal try to touch that mountain, he's going to be killed. So you stay away. And the Lord came down. And begin to talk. And when they heard God talk, they thought they were about to die. Yeah. They thought they would die. They said, Moses, that's all right, man. We'll hear you. We'll hear you, Moses. We'll hear you. Don't let God speak to us. We're going to die. Wow. And all these folks run around and think they hear from God more than the established leader that God has set in order. God is an orderly God. Look, God from the side. That's, that, that's how Miriam got in trouble. Miriam, I'm a prophetess. God speak to me too. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. God is a God of order. Amen. Hearing God does not puff you up. Hearing God humbles you. Amen. Oh, y'all are hearing me tonight. Amen. All these prophets running around here with their chest spoken. I know they haven't heard from God. Because hearing from God does not make you boastful and proud. Amen. Hearing from God makes you humble. That God would even, amen, think enough of you to give a message through you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. If God uses you to do something and now you feel like you can tell everybody what to do, that's the wrong spirit. Amen. Hearing God brings humility to you. Amen. Hearing God brings patience to you. Amen. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me go on to my next points. I'm almost finished, praise the Lord. Hearing obligates the listener. I think the next night, but we have to make sure we got some heat on here. We're cool. I don't know what happened. We got cold out of here. Hearing God obligates the listener to act on behalf of what they heard. Hearing 
obligates the listener to act on the behalf of what they heard. So the hearer is not justified only. But the purpose of hearing so that you can have the right response and action. Now, give me Hebrews 11 and 7. Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith. By faith. No. No. Being born of God. Being warned of who? Of God. Of God. He's not seen as yet. He didn't see it, but he heard it. Move with fear. He moved with fear. What let me know that he believed God? He didn't see it, but he heard it and he moved with fear. Hallelujah. And you, when you hear something from God, you are under obligation to act out what God told you to do. Now, for everything that God says, he warns you of, he tells you what to do. Hallelujah. God don't leave that part on you. He tells you, he, he's going to give you, amen, what to do, how to handle it. If God has not given you how to handle it, he's just telling you, watch and wait for instruction. Oh, y'all quiet. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So Noah heard and saved his house. Because he moved on what he heard. The Bible said, for those that hear the sound of the trumpet, amen, and, 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 and don't take cover, praise the Lord. The Bible said they'll be taken in their own iniquity and their blood will be upon their what? Own head. Because they didn't move at the sound of the trumpet. He said, but if the, if the watchman hear the sound, or, he, or the Lord warns the watchman, and the watchman don't blow the trumpet, he said, and the people suffer, he said, praise the Lord, I'm going to require the blood at the watchman's hand. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Praise the Lord. But if you, if you, if you have the watchman, blew the trumpet, you blew it. And praise our God, the persons, amen, under your charge, did not move to hear and do. Praise God. When they go through what they go through, it's on their own way. You did your job. You blew the trumpet in Zion. That's all you can do is blow the trumpet. That's my, as a watchman, sitting on the wall, that's all you can do is blow the trumpet. You can't pick up a sword. You can't, you, 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 you can't dictate battle plans. You're just an informer. That's all. Inform the people what they need to do. I, I hear Praise the Lord. Chariots coming. Look like a whole army coming to besiege us. You better. <laughs> Amen. Now I done told you what to do. Now it's up to you to take note. You better hear. Amen. Sometimes, saints of God, we're so caught up in so much of our life, we don't hear the warnings of God. Amen. We don't hear. We busy with everything else. And, and, and the thing about it is, how can you hear God when you don't never put yourself in a posture to hear God? Amen. There's a certain posture. Who did God give more credence to, Mary or Martha? Praise God. Martha was in the kitchen serving. The Bible says she was covered about much serving. And where was Mary? She was sitting at Jesus' feet listening. And Martha got hot because she felt like that what she was doing was more important. And that since, you know, after all, Mary lived in the same house, she should be a good host and come out and serve too. Mm -hmm. And so she finds you know what? I done told Ma, I done told Mary all, all I'm gonna tell her. I'm gonna tell the Lord. The Lord, I'm gonna let the Lord give. Her. And she goes to the Lord, Lord, do you care that my sister have left me to serve all these people by myself? And the Lord looked at her and said, Martha, Martha. It is when you want God to get somebody, but he turned around and, and rebukes you. Yeah. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried. You are coming about many things. But Mary has chosen the better part, and it shall never be taken from her. In other words, I'm not going to rebuke her for wanting to listen. Serving is a great thing. Yeah. Serving is a great thing. He, he not, and he's not telling you to shirk your responsibilities. There, there's a time and place. But at that moment in time, her motivation for going to Jesus was not because she really cared about the, the intent of Mary's soul. She just wanted to prove a point that I'm right and you wrong. Mm -hmm. When you come at that kind of notion, you will always be the one to get rebuked. 
Because your motives ain't right. Your heart ain't right. Amen. You hear me? Amen. You be talking to somebody about the scripture. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Ain't that, right? Ain't that what the word said? And then, and then the word come right around and cut you and rebuke you. Yeah. <laughs> Leave you open shame face before them. Why, why does it do that? Amen. Because your motives is not right. Because when I say the word of God is living. The word of God is living. Hallelujah. Forget that God's word is a living entity. Amen. Living. Hallelujah. The word is living. And it knows the intents of our hearts. It knows everything. We can say all we want to say. But the word knows why we say and why we do what we do. Hallelujah. Thank you. Sometimes. Hearing God, we have to be taught how to hear. Uh, hearing God is not a natural thing that you just not not after you have been born to sin and share with iniquity, because sin separated us from God. So hearing the voice of God, many times we have to be coached to talk. Amen. Give me First Samuel the third chapter, and verse seven. Everybody all right? Amen. Amen. First Samuel, the third chapter, that verse 7. Now Samuel did not get no Lord. Now, God called Samuel by name. But look at what he said. But Samuel did not know the Lord. Read. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the word of the Lord wasn't revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. He called him again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said. He went to Eli and said. Here am I. Here am I. For thou didn't call me. Because you called me. So God's voice sounded like Eli. His leader. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. That's who, his voice, that's who the voice of God sounds like. Whoever you are connected to. Hallelujah. Read. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. Yeah. But thou didst call me. You did call me. And Eli perceived the Lord and called the child. Eli perceived it was the Lord. See, he had perception. Even though Eli was in a backslidden condition, even though the word of the Lord was precious in those days, he had enough perception to know when God was speaking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Your experience will tell you when God was speaking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He perceived that it was the Lord that was calling him. Read. And, and Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, what Go, lie down. Go, lie down. And it shall be. And it shall be. If he called thee. If he called thee. And thou shalt say. Thou shalt say. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Thy servant you, you, you see, he, he, even though, praise the Lord, God was about to bring judgment on his pastor. Amen. It still took, amen, the word of his pastor to instruct him, praise the Lord, how to hear the voice of God. Amen. We live in a day and time where everybody hears everything on their own and nobody is subject to nobody. But let me help you understand something. Even if someone is under judgment and they have ever been anointed by God, you got to be careful how you deal with that individual because they have heard from God. And they can tell you how to move in the things of God. And sometimes we are young, but we need to be careful because sometimes when we're young and we're fresh, we feel like God is moving in our lives. And, and sometimes the older ones are not moving as fast as we want them to move. We think that we're getting something that they don't have. Amen. When you start thinking like that, you are in a dangerous place because how do you think they got to be the older ones? They heard something. Yeah. And they had an experience. Maybe they ain't had a vision in 10 years. But I guarantee you when they see one, they know one. Yeah. God can give you a vision. You don't even know what you saw. Because yeah. you don't have the experience with God. Yeah. Hey, y'all are hearing me tonight. Yeah. You need somebody to push you into your next level. Yes. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yeah. And the person that is pushing you can't be somebody that's green. Just like you. Amen. It can't be the person that's on the same level. They can't push you because they're, amen, they're in the same place. They can't see no further than you can. Amen. They can't hear no better than you can. Amen. Hallelujah. People are I'm a spiritual father. 
You ain't even a natural father, but you're a spiritual father. Wow. How do you know how to be a father? Wow. That's my spiritual daughter. That's my spiritual son. You ain't got no children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all understand? You see where I'm going with that? How can you push somebody Amen. to where you've never been? Amen. I told one brother, you know, he was, you know, talking about getting up under somebody's ministry because he, you know, felt led that they would be their friend. And I told him this. I said, listen, bro. I said, that's fine and dandy what you want to do. Said, but let me give you a word of caution. I said, don't try to submit to somebody who's hungry like you are. In other words, don't put yourself under somebody who needs you. A father should, should want his children, but not need them. Amen. A father, praise the Lord, should be able, because he is a father, he should be able to be sustained of himself without needing his child. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all ain't here. When a father needs his child, a father, praise the Lord, will molest his child. When a father needs his child, he will take advantage of the child. So you should always be wanted by your father, but you should never be needed. And if you get into a situation where this person that's supposed to be your spiritual father, he ain't got nothing more going for him than what you got going for you, amen, praise the Lord, you, you're not going to grow and you're not going to prosper in that situation because he has nothing invested in his life to push you. Amen. amen. Very careful that we understand these principles. The Bible says that when Melchizedek, when, when Abraham met Melchizedek, he paid him a tenth. And, and Melchizedek blessed him. And the Bible says that the greater always blesses the lesser. Amen. So you, when you tithe, you always tithe up. When the blessing, the blessing always flow down. Praise the Lord. Uh, if Melchizedek and Abraham were on the same level, amen, it would not have been a blessing for Abraham. Amen. And there would be no need for Abraham to tie them because they're on the same level. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You always tied up, but you blessed down. Okay. You tied up, but you blessed down. Mm -hmm. Y'all quiet. Yeah. That's deep, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so some who are immature must be taught. How to hear the voice of God. Amen. I know you, I know you got, I know you got a little prophetic gift, but you got to be taught how to use it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to sharpen your skills. You got to be able to hone it. And the first thing somebody that's mature is going to tell you, increase your prayer life. Amen. Because if you ain't talking to God, he ain't talking to you. That's right. Amen. That's true. Shine thus saith the Lord. How does he speak so much when you don't speak to him? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. No prayer life whatsoever. Real. Hallelujah. Amen. But but God told you. Do you do you even have a a, a developed uh, pattern for prayer? Right. Do you put that kind of premium on the prayer? In other words, do you know what you're gonna be doing every morning about a certain time? Now, this is about the time that I pray. If you don't develop a pattern of prayer, I guarantee you are not praying like you should. Amen. Amen. If you just wing it, well, I just pray. Whenever. You ain't you, that that that's not no dedication. Amen. The, the, the worship to God is the discipline to say, I'm going to make myself pray. Amen. I'm going to do it until it becomes natural for me to the point where if I don't do it, I miss it. That's how you know it's become a part of you as a person. It, you know, maybe one night you get in the bed and you just like dog time. You know, about been there. Yeah. And, you, and it just comes to you like, oh God, I gotta pray. And no matter how tired you are, and the bed feeling good, and the sheets have claimed you as one of their own, and you just kind of like, you just, ah, oh God. <laughs> it might be a quick one tonight, but I'm gonna go do it because I got the honor. Right. Amen. God meets you at the time of that. When you have covenant, oh my God. Have you ever told somebody, meet me, praise the Lord, meet me at the Italian restaurant at 12 o'clock and we're going to eat lunch. And, and, and every day you know to meet that person at that certain place to do lunch. Amen. Or whatever the time, dinner or whatever. You, and, and, and have you ever, praise the Lord, been late? Or have that person ever not showed up? And you're wondering, I showed up and this person didn't come. What in the world is going on? What has you worried about? They didn't call. They didn't say, you know, I'm, I'm running late. Or I, I can't make, I got a cold. I can't make it today. And so you're disappointed. 
When you covenant to meet God at a certain time every day and you don't do it, God is standing there holding the back saying, but we agreed to meet here at this time. We agreed to talk here at this time. I had something I wanted to tell you. I had something I wanted to reveal to you. But you allowed your sleep more present. You allowed whatever it is you thought you had to do more present over listening to the voice of God. Amen. I'm telling you, beloved, God is just like that. It's a relationship with God. Amen. It is very tangible. Yes, it's spiritual, but it's tangible. You know God meets you there. And when, and, and when, my God. And you know what? You can be close enough to God. You can also tell when he didn't meet you there. If he didn't meet you there, you were like, well, Lord, did I sin? What's wrong? You now, now, now you start examining yourself because his presence wasn't here. I did, you know, I sung the song, but I didn't feel it. I, I prayed to her, but then something was boom. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Having a relationship with God, you know him. I've been with my wife, friends, out for 17 years. I don't, I can't tell you how I know it, but if my back is turned and she walk in the room, I know she's in the room. Without her slamming the door, making any noise, or I feel her presence in the room. I can also tell when one of the children come in the room. I can tell the difference between their presence and her presence. Cause that's strange. No, it's not strange. When you know people, when you know the person that you're with, you can tell her it's the same way. I know when God shows up. His presence is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I making sense tonight? Amen. Lord, I got to wrap this up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are four ways that we hear God. Hallelujah. Four ways. Right. And I'm not numbering them in order of importance. It's just how, how, how they happen to come down. Praise the Lord that I praise the Lord. So one is not necessarily more important than the other. Praise the Lord. But they all have significant importance. Amen? Amen. Number one. How do we hear God? Through our pastor or the preached word. Give me Romans 10 and 14. Through the preaching of the word. Mm -hmm. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How are they going to call on somebody they don't believe in? Uh huh. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How are they going to believe in the person that they ain't never heard about? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear? <coughs> God speaks to us through the servants that he has anointed, the vessels to carry his word. Amen. Hallelujah. And it, it actually goes on, brothers, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So somebody that's not sent, don't carry a valid word. You can't hear God. Well, how do I know whether somebody is sent or not? My sheep hear my voice. Hear my voice. In other words, if you have a relationship with God, you ought to be able to hear God in that person and say that they've been sent by God. When you know God for yourself, you can hear God. You know God speaking. Praise the Lord. You can be in a room where nobody's accepting the preaching, but you can hear God in what he's saying. Because the, the ability to hear God is not based upon how many people agree that you heard God. You can be the only one agreeing that God is speaking. Everybody else is like clowning. That's why it's not good to be in cliques and, 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 and let other people uh, uh, taint your mind about somebody. Mm -hmm. You have to form your own mindset on somebody. Amen. Because sometimes you'll miss God trying to listen to them about the prayer. You better, you better open your ears and see if you can hear God. Amen. And if you don't hear God, then the Bible says a stranger they won't follow. I ain't going where you at. Amen, Zion. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Jeremiah 3 and 1. Jeremiah 3 and verse 1. They say, you said 3 and 1? Mm -hmm. They say, if a man put away his wife. That Jeremiah? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Try 7 and 1. I'm not The word that came to Jeremiah. I'll try it. From the Lord saying, uh -huh. 
stand in the gate? Yes. Of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I was trying to get to that verse that say, and I will give you pastors after my own heart. Three and fifteen. Three and fifteen. See, I I, I, I deleted the five on the one. Okay. Right, that's why I really it's always good to have the five. <laughs> yeah. right, I go give what you say? pastors. Uh huh. According to my heart. God says, I will give you pastors according to His heart, not your heart. Uh huh. According to God's heart. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And the pastor will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So God speaks to us through the preachers, through our leaders. Amen. Amen. God I always said like this. God loved you enough, praise the Lord, to send me you. Amen. He, lo he loved you enough to send you a preacher. He didn't send the preacher so the preacher could feel important. He didn't send the preacher so the preacher could feel respected. He sent the preacher because he knew that that's the method he chose to speak to people about. And the people belong to God. And the preacher need not ever forget that he is dealing with somebody else's people. Amen. Anytime I get to thinking that I'm lowered over God's heritage, God can do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, number two. He speaks to us through prophetic voices. Amen. Even in the New Testament church, the prophet is still a way that God speaks. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3. 1 Corinthians 14 and at verse 3. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men mm -hmm. to edification mm -hmm. and exhortation uh -huh. and comfort. All right, so he that prophesied, he speaketh unto me to edification, exhortation, and comfort. So God still uses the prophetic word and utterance to speak to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the prophet or the office of the prophet don't carry the same way it carried in the Old Testament because we are in a different dispensation. So all these people that walk in the office of the prophetic and they think that, that gives them the license to just come in and disrespect pastors and say whatever they want to say and just tell the church all of you in the name of being a prophet, they're out of order. Amen. Amen. And as a pastor, you are the prophet of that house. Yes. So you have the ability to shut them as an up note. And the spirit of the prophet subject is subject to the prophet. Amen. There's always order. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's always order. There's never a time when people can run around. The Bible says he has set some in the church. First what? Apostles. Then prophets. But each one of these of the fivefold ministry work in their place. Amen. And when you, amen, get out of your place and try to do something, you're out of order. No matter what kind of words you got. If I'm preaching, you're not supposed to interrupt me and say, Shut it, 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 it. this is what the Lord. No, God don't interrupt God. Amen. Amen. If you're up testifying and somebody else, they just, they, I feel, I just can't control. Shut it, 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 They are out of order. Amen. I have the right to say, listen, stop. God don't interrupt God. Yes. Amen. I'm preaching God and you're speaking God. God don't interrupt. There is perfect harmony in the God here. Amen. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Praise the Lord. That's how you can know whether somebody is really in the spirit. Here, here, we done shouted. We done, we done praise the Lord. And people done got drunk in the spirit. We just have a good time. And then everything done quieted down and we're ready to move on. But there's still somebody. Ooh, gee, ooh. And us just got the whole <laughs> yeah. and, and, That's another kind of spirit. That ain't God's spirit, because God's spirit ain't a wild spirit. So somebody that one time, they had to come back and apologize, because they knew that it wasn't God. Amen. God don't overstep, praise the Lord. He, when God sets up an authority, God respects the authority yes. that he sets up. Amen. Huh? Praise the Lord. When, 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 praise God. When God got ready to punish Adam and Eve, he didn't go and punish Eve for Adam's sin. He punished Adam for his own and Eve her own. And the world is in trouble today. Praise our God because God respects the fact that man made his own decision. Amen. 
God respects order and authority. Rank and order. I'm telling you, saints of God. And if we want to know how to operate in the kingdom, we got to be able to respect rank and order. Amen. You just can't do whatever you want to do when you get ready and say, God said it. And all of a sudden, because you said God said it, we all supposed to say, oh, but God said it. So we just, there's always protocol. There's always order. God is the God of order. That's how you know whether the spirit is right. Because it has checks and balances. I mean, even if you get up with a word that you know is from the Lord, and whoever the head of the house is says, you know what you do? That person that shut you down, they're going to be responsible for not hearing what God had to say. Not you, because he gave you order. Now, praise the Lord, if that person is in tune with God, they'll know it's God. If that person is not in tune with God, that person not in tune with God, it still does not negate the authority that they have because of the position. Amen. Because God honors order and position. It's just like you wives that have a husband. Even if your husband ain't saved, he's still your head. Amen. And you and there are certain things you can't go over him with. Amen. 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 Praise God. Even if you must, let's say he's saved, but you're more spiritual. Your prayer life is on top. There are some things God going to give to him because he's the head and he ain't going to give it to you. God never negates the responsibility of the person that he's left in charge because you feel like this is what God said. If God did that, the whole world would be out of order. Because do you know not how many people walk around saying God said this and God said that and God said that other thing? The way you authenticate something is its ability to get in line and get in order. If this is the established order and you fight it, you in rebellion. Amen. Yes. Okay, so like, what if you're under, what if you, if you're under the spirit of the Holy Ghost and somebody is trying to give you a word, I mean, you know how people say like, you gotta drink Jesus. Mm -hmm. Is it wrong, or not, I don't want to say wrong, but like out of order, if you, Okay, okay, so for example, um, you know, I was receiving a prophecy, but I was under the spirit of the Holy Ghost, and I was like, speaking in tongues. I heard what the man of God was saying, but I was still speaking in tongues. Was I out of order? Yes, because if God is speaking, God and God, because if you're speaking, God's not, in other words, if I'm speaking, and somebody else is speaking, I'm really not getting the full effect of what they're saying. So like when the scripture said, if two people stand up and start speaking in tongues, start prophesying, the one that's in the and in charge says, "Okay, you stop, you go." And then when you finish, now you can go. But now let me tell you something. If I stop you, and you, and when I come back to you, you ain't got nothing to say. That means you ain't had no right spirit to begin with. Because see, I think especially in the Black Pentecostal church. We have we we think that the spirit of God just make you wild and just make you where you just you just all out your head and it ain't like that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen white people operate mm -hmm. in order? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not they speak in tongues, mm -hmm. they interpret it, mm -hmm. they get the interpretation and they move on. Yeah. They ain't got to fall up under the chair and be pulled out and this and blah, 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 blah. and all of that. A lot of what that mm -hmm. is is cultural dramatics. Yeah. It's more dramatic. Yep, yeah. And some of it is witchcraft yep. to try to intimidate somebody to make them think that we're more spiritual than what we are. Amen. If I feel like you ain't going to hear what I got to say, <laughs> the Lord, and the wall of my eyes all in the back of my head. And the Lord, I'm, you're supposed to hear me because my eyes are in the back of my head. That's God. That might be a demon. Amen. Amen. God is a God got good sense. Yeah. 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 If, he, if you're gonna prophesy, you ain't got to speak in ten tongues to prophesy. Amen. Yeah. And never get so Saisha got it one night. <laughs> we was in sir, just in one back back in her um, wild days. <laughs> and she don't mind me saying it, praise God. You so good. And praise the Lord, and she just went to speaking, and I mean, she just started sounding like Spanish, and I mean, the honest, you were just gone. I mean, it took up at least about 10, 15 minutes, just, and I looked at her, and I said, if you don't have an interpretation for stopping the service like this, I said, you are out of order. 
She she found an interpretation from somewhere. <laughs> it comes from somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to, you got science, and the reason why you got to be real with stuff like that because somebody's sitting out there in the audience that don't know God, and they may be fooled to think that that is God. Now, I take pride, and maybe pride is the wrong word, but for lack of a better word right now, I take pride in knowing that I take the time to teach the people that God has entrusted me with the right application of scripture and how to do things in the church. So that when you come into contact with people that don't know what they're doing, it don't bother you. In other words, it don't cause you to stumble. You know the difference between truth and error. So we ain't got to spend all day long fighting with somebody that we ain't going to never see again. You like the young man that come and told my daughter she gonna preach. Well, we know we don't believe in women preachers. Amen. 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 Then when he saw, when he felt that spirit in the church, and he said, "Well, no, she gonna prophesy," which meant okay, that's a difference. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I don't have when 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 you cover your eyes in good teaching. I ain't got. To, in other words, we ain't got to make a scene Amen. with people. Right. If, you, if you should happen to show up to a church, let's say you've been invited to go somewhere, praise God, and you go, amen, all of a sudden, some lady get out with a robe on, <laughs> you ain't got to act crazy. You ain't got to go there and just be like, oh my God, you look, oh, I just can't, oh, I just can't. <laughs> if you acting like that, you are immature. Because what you do ain't going to change them. That's right. Or y'all quiet. Amen. Never get praise God. And I'm bringing it in. I'm bringing it in because my time was up. Never forget, praise God, one of our uh, church members. Amen. One of our church members. Amen. Durham. Brother had got killed, had got shot. Praise the Lord. And his family had the, had the funeral in the church. And, and wherever his parents were going to the church at, the lady was the pastor. So she had to so say, We were there supporting them. We wasn't there for them, but we were there, you know, supporting them. And I never forget, Sister Bernie, bless her heart, she's gone on be with the Lord now. Sister Bernie, praise the Lord, was sitting up, amen, in, 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 in the choir stand, because they, they had run out of room, praise the Lord, had run out of room for them. So she sat in the choir stand. And it was so uh, strange, praise the Lord, because as soon as the lady got ready to get up, Bernie got her, her pocketbook, wow. got up, and all you could see was her walking down the middle of the aisle, going out the middle. We know why she was walking out. But see, it looked, it looked ignorant. Praise God. When, 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 when I was at, uh, praise the Lord, Brother Brandon's mother's funeral, and you know, her former pastor was a lady. She knew, the lady knew her, even though she had changed membership, the lady had knew her longer than any of us had ever known her. Praise the Lord. So the family, you know, her 